Christ is risen. He is risen that was pathetic. Christ is risen. He is risen Beautiful friends and members and visitors to First Presbyterian Church. Welcome on this Easter Sunday, 2023. Those of you worshiping with us from afar, we're so glad to have you here today. This is going to be a communion Sunday. We're not doing the can-do offering, but do take a look at um, the back of the insert in the bulletin. It has some information from the Property Finance Committee about our fundraiser for a new organ. Um, the sound of traditional worship is alive and well at First Presbyterian Church, and we want to keep this magnificent instrument running beautifully for a long time to come. So... Um, if you are so inclined when we're taking the offering uh, to contribute to that, that would be lovely. So communion, our table belongs to God. Everyone is welcome to partake. We will be passing trays with juice and bread this morning in the pews. Those of you who are worshiping at home, you will need to supply your own elements, a cracker or a little piece of bread, and you can use juice, wine, or water if you're worshiping with us at home. Uh, get those elements together, and then we will all celebrate communion live in real time, if not completely in person uh, later in the service. Are there any other, oh, I do have one announcement on, in the bulletin and on the slides. We've said that um, the next trivia night that's coming up is on April 13th. It's actually April 23rd, so two weeks from today. So that is always a great, great time. Our quiz master this time around is gonna be John Klotzbach, who's behind the camera, and um, yeah, yeah, mark your calendars. That's always good time. Okay, any other announcements that either didn't? I see, I see someone hugely backlit who is waving crazily over there. Let's see who it is. It's Julie. So we are so glad to have back. All right. We would like to invite any kids that are here for the service to meet us at the front doors right after um, service for an Easter egg hunt. And after children's message, if any of the older kids who are not um, finding eggs would like to hide eggs, we would appreciate the help. I'm not going to be much. Thank you. <laughs> Julie will be in the role of management. All right. Anything, anything else? All right. Good morning, you've got to. <clears throat> All right, so as we always do, let's take just a moment to get settled in where we're at. Silence phones, get comfortable where you're seated, and let's take just a few moments to prepare ourselves to worship God on this holiest of days.
Here we go. Beloved church, behold the victory of our God. Jesus, our Lord, has conquered the grave. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Sin and death shall reign no more. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let this place thunder with joy. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. There we go. Wonderful. Look at all you guys. All right. Happy Easter. But in the church we say Christ is risen. And then you say? He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Very, very good. All right. So how many of you did Easter egg hunting yesterday? Some of you did. Yep. Looks like most of you got a pretty good haul. Yes. You found a golden one at your grandma's. And you got a lot of stuff at your house. Easter is so much fun. I didn't find the golden egg. Kason said he found the golden egg. Oh, 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 we've got a di big brother's telling a different story here. Yeah. You did? What was inside the golden egg? Uh, a bunch of chocolate. A bunch of chocolate. Oh, ho, ho. that's the greatest kind. Okay, well, let me ask you this. What does Jesus have to do with this? Yes. What do you think? 
I'll, I'll proceed this by saying this is totally a trick question. Go ahead. You know what? You must have read my notes. That was exactly where I was going with this. You know what? We are going to let you say that loud and proud because that's the sermon, dude. All right. What is what is candy and Jesus rising from the grave have in common? Joy and the Easter Bunny. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Jesus rising from the grave and the Easter Bunny and candy bring joy. Yeah. So joy is a is a word that we use a lot in the church. When you hear the word joy. What do you think of? Don't say candy, because that's too obvious. Okay. Oh, you know what? We're going to let you all talk out loud and proud, and then maybe I won't have to do my job today. Okay. When I think of joy, I think of what God and Jesus did for us. Yeah, that, that makes you feel joyful. Yeah. When you think of joy, what do you think of? I think of happiness for all. Happiness for all. I think you're right. Joy is something that we don't feel by ourselves. Joy is something that we share with other people. That's kind of the definition. Yeah. And joy is also something that we can feel even if we're sad. Now, how weird is that? How can you be happy and sad at the same time? Well, joy is, is a little bit different. Joy is, even when we're sad, knowing that there is, there is something out there that is good and true. It's knowing that even if we're lonely, we are still surrounded by people who love us, who see the world in similar ways as we do, and who take care of each other. Not just when you're, not just when you're little, but also take care of each other when, when they're big. So I want to share with you, we've got, we've got something really special today for you guys. Really special in the backpack. Oh, hey, really quickly, did you guys see the cover of the bulletin? Would the artist of the bulletin please raise his hand? Very good. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that a lot of you are artists too you make different things you're what you're four okay good clarification case if you guys want to do a cover for a bulletin all you have to do is come and talk to me because this is something that brings God joy when you guys when you guys put yourselves forward and you worship God in different ways with different gifts that God has given you so Let's see, let's see here. Who shall, uh, you got to do the bulletin. Your name's all over everything. I didn't. You didn't, you're right. Okay, Miles, do you want to reach into, okay, this is joy. This is joy. This is pure, unadulterated, wonderful joy. What's in there? What's candy. in there? What kind of candy? It's very special. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jelly beans. Help yourself. Yeah, what, what, that, that's not, you're not, you're not over the moon? About, anybody else want, want some of my jelly beans? Oh boy, jelly beans, jelly beans? You can have one? All right, what do you think? Oh, was that a huge disappointment, Miles? You want one? Okay, all right, I think, I think Rowan understands why this is, there you go, there, you got enough. All right. More of you are interested in these jelly beans than I was expecting. They're licorice. So we're going to do a, we're going to do, can you put it back? <laughs> That's what I was expecting. That's what I was expecting. All right. No, no, Kason's like, no way. Oh, okay, and Aubrey took Miles's. All right. All right. Do we have another? Oh, did, you didn't get one. We gotta get you one. All right. 
All right, so how many of you, is this a taste sensation? Is this the very taste of Easter? No. No. Yes. Oh, yeah! All right. How many of the grown-ups love black jelly beans? See, we are not exactly legion. But, yeah, marshmallow peeps. How many of you like marshmallow peeps? Way fewer. (laughs) Yeah. And when we have these, it makes us feel joy, right? There's just that moment of of joy. Because candy can bring joy. Now, too much candy can bring cavities, and that is not joyful. And this this is where the metaphor completely falls apart. And it can bring stomach aches. But joy... Joy in Jesus saving us. Joy in Jesus loving us. And a sugar rush, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. You were going to say a sugar rush? (laughs) Well, maybe we can think this Easter about a love rush. That when we think about how much Jesus loves us and how much he did for us, it can fill us with love for other people. So, shall we practice that? Let's pray. Dear God, help us love others because we know that you love us. Amen. All right. on the front of the lamp. Our prayer of confession is not a laundry list of wrongs. It is an affirmation of faith in the God who went to utmost lengths to save us from our worst selves. It is a wondrous love our God has for us. So let's join together in prayer for forgiveness and restored relationship with God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, through the Holy Spirit's power, you have raised us from the waters of baptism to share in your glorious resurrection. Yet we have not lived as Easter people. We confess we doubt your promises of restoration and life eternal. Your will challenges and confuses us, and we fear for the consequences of following you too religiously in a culture that is hostile to your goodness. Forgive us, Savior God, we pray. Whenever we are tempted to fear death, Give us courage to confess your early. Whenever petty conflicts distract us, draw our minds back to your reconciling love. Whenever the power of evil overwhelms us, reveal to us again your love which surpasses the sum of all human sin. Let our lives testify to your salvation. Please take a moment for personal prayer. Here, O church, God who raised Jesus from the dead has not given us over to death. Believe the good news. Christ reconciles God and humankind and creates a place in his kingdom for all whom he knows by name. Alleluia.
point in the service, we want to acknowledge those of you who are joining us from afar, some of you from very afar, across state lines. You honor us with your presence during this time. If you are joining us online and you have not put a greeting in the comments field, please do so. We want to know that you are here with us. And those of you who are here in person, be sure to take a second when we're passing the peace to wave at those who are at home so they can see you guys as well. We've got this morning Carol. We've got uh, the Sours. We've got Tammy. We've got Monty, Sue and Diane, who are in Ottumwa, Karen, who is in Milwaukee, uh, Melody, we've got Billy Joe. Thank you all so much for being with us. And those of you who are here in person, God bless you. Doesn't it feel good to have this much human energy in the room? Uh, so we now have an opportunity for all of us to share in the oldest Christian benediction, the first words out of Jesus' mouth to his disciples in the Gospel of John, the words, peace be with you, when he appeared to them in that locked room. So, as God has loved and forgiven all of us, let us practice the same toward one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please pass the peace of Christ. Hear, O church, God who raised Jesus from the dead has not given us over to death. Believe the good news. Oh. Oops, I already read that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> then the angel spoke to the women. We oh, my are, goodness. We're right there. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> this, we didn't so have I'll, a rehearsal. I'll take care of that. <laughs> we need rehearsal. You can, you can sit down until after they're done with that. Okay. Okay. Yay. You can take that with you. <laughs> Our order of worship is switched up a little bit this morning because of communion. All right. This is the point at which we, as Christ's people, the church, Lift up prayers for one another and for our world. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, on this holiest of mornings, we give you thanks for bringing all of us together and in this modern age, bringing us together in so many different ways. We pray today, O oh God, for the church throughout the world. Two point some billion Christians all joining together to proclaim this article of faith. That God so loved the world that not even death could lock it away. So for the church throughout the world, as we celebrate this day of resurrection, 
We pray that you will daily renew our faith and strengthen the church's witness in Jesus' name. God, in your mercy. We pray for the leaders of your church, O oh God, for those who are professional religious people, for teachers, for elders, for volunteers who step up day after day, week after week, for the folks behind the scenes, for gifted musicians. We pray for parents of children and grandparents because they are our children's first religious teachers. We pray that all will be wise in leadership, humble in their service, and fearless in the face of evil. God, in your mercy. Gracious God, for the governments of the world and the leaders, whether they be of nations or states or counties, we pray that they may practice compassion and we pray that they reject politics that use death and suffering and fear as means of control. God, in your mercy. We pray for our beautiful, broken old planet that we may be good stewards of its resources and share in its abundance. God, in your mercy. For those whom Jesus took special care to mention, people who are poor, who are going hungry, people who don't have adequate clothing, people who are mixed up in the criminal justice system, people who are forgotten behind bars or walls, people who are sick. We pray, O oh God, that all of these may receive a place of refuge, of hope, and of hospitality. God, in your mercy. For our neighbors, gracious God, and in a world that is much smaller than it was when Jesus walked the earth because of the communication systems we have. We pray that you open our hearts to one another so that we can dwell harmoniously. God, in your mercy. And God, perhaps most difficult of all, we pray for our enemies. We ask you for the grace to love and forgive them. And we ask for the will, the energy, to be agents of reconciliation in Jesus' name. God, in your mercy. Gracious, sovereign, almighty, loving God, we offer you these prayers, and we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will use us, each in our own unique ways, for the sake of the gospel of life, the gospel of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen.
Will you pray with me? Holy Spirit of God, we ask you to roll away the stones preventing us from receiving your word. Enter into our darkness and illuminate us so we can clearly see to follow where Christ leads. Amen. This is the story of Jesus' resurrection according to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Listen for God's word to the church. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. Its face shone like lightning, and its clothing was as white as the snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw it, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, it said. I know you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying, and, that, and now go quickly and tell his other disciples he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember that I have, what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the rest of the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell all the disciples to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
preaching today without notes, so I'm setting a timer. I, I had a hard time getting into the Easter season this year, which is very unusual for me. Lent is usually my favorite part of the year. I love Holy Week, and I just, just was not, not feeling it this year. Not exactly sure what was, what was going on with that, but when you're not sort of into the lead up, when the actual day arrives, it was a little lackluster this morning when I got up, and usually on Easter morning I'm jumping out of bed and, you know, as you do. Um, so I was pondering that this morning. I've been pondering it actually for several days. And I was getting ready for work, and I was listening, I was streaming it off of YouTube, John Rutter's Requiem, which if you're not familiar with it, is, is breathtakingly beautiful. And in part of that Requiem, there's a piece that speaks to the moment of the discovery of Jesus' resurrection. It's this amazing, swelling, theophanic moment. Theophanic is a fancy word for encountering God. So I'm, I'm listening to this, and it's just gorgeous, and I'm starting, to get, I'm starting to get into the groove. I'm thinking, yep, yep, we're going to be able to do this. And I, so I had it on my phone, on my Bluetooth speaker, which for some reason is hooked up into the fan in my bathroom. I'm renting. I don't know what the deal is. But, so I've got it on really loud, and I leave to go get dressed, and all of a sudden I hear a commercial break in to this stream of Rudder's Requiem. And it says, a Japanese doctor has just made a terrifying discovery about the root causes of dementia. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with X, Y, Z. It has everything to do with five toxic compounds in your regular diet. And I thought, I don't want to listen to this anymore because I'll bet they're going to say something about peeps for breakfast being one of the contributing factors, but I could feel myself getting stressed about it. And, and so, you know, of course, I grabbed another peep, as you do, to make me feel better, which then it didn't because I'm thinking, and then I realized that's the problem. We are so bombarded from all sides with these messages that things are not okay as if we need reminders that things are not okay. We can look at our own lives and see the ways that our relationships or the way we're managing our finances or the way we're doing at work, none of these things are meeting our expectations. But then on top of that, we've got all of this news that is so terrible, and some of it is legitimately terrible. And some of it we do need to be paying attention to. But the way it comes at us, constantly, 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 rather than engaging us to step in and be the people that God created us to be, the peacemakers, the healers, the teachers, what it does is makes us shut down. We can only take so much of this kind of fear-mongering, bitterness-inducing, failure-feeling messaging. Some pastors go into Easter Sunday putting a tremendous amount of pressure on themselves to, to preach a brilliant, brilliant sermon. I think Easter Sunday is the Sunday when we need just a reminder of what the one message is. The one message is, he is risen. He is risen. And it's up to each of us to decide, what does that even mean? Why does that even matter? I sometimes laugh when I'm with friends and somebody is, is sort of snickering about, um, you know, somebody has some weird belief in such and so, or, you know, they, they do whatever it is, that, oh, astrology, ha, 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 isn't that silly? Or, oh, they've got this tree religion, ha, ha, isn't that funny? Our foundational faith claim is that a Jewish carpenter was executed as an enemy of the state 
rose from the dead after being in the grave for three days, and oh, by the way, is God. That is a statement that makes no rational sense of any kind. I think the real, minis- the real miracle on Easter Sunday is not so much that God raised the dead, God can do whatever God wants. The real miracle is that 2,000 years later, on the other side of the globe, in a culture unimaginably different from the one in which Jesus ministered, and we can say this of cultures all over the place, not just American culture, Christians are still gathering together to assert this crazy thing as true. What does it mean that such a thing is true? It means that all of that scary stuff is subordinate to that empty cross, to the empty tomb. It means that we know that our Redeemer lives, as as Amy sang, that love incarnate, God incarnate, could not be contained by what is the inevitable end in this life of all of us. And if Christ Jesus wasn't contained, we don't need to fear anything. Bad stuff is going to happen. Hard stuff is going to happen. We all know this. But it doesn't get to have the last word. Not in God's telling of the story, and not in the telling of the story of God's people. The first two things that the angel and Jesus, well, not really the first two things, Jesus says, greetings in some translations um, of this story from Matthew today. The Greek is actually way more familiar than greetings. It's more like, what's up? Jesus enters into the, this woman, these women's experience of his resurrection in a very familiar way, with a greeting that indicates that he has missed them and that he's glad to see them and that he's going to be with them. But after that, the angel and he are saying, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what a world that is hostile to this message is going to do and say to you. And you know it doesn't do any good to uh, set my alarm if I don't turn it off, turn it on. So I'll wrap this up here quickly. Um, Don't be afraid of your own skepticism. Don't be afraid of all the evidence to the contrary. Christ has saved us as a group, church. Because this message is ours to bear, and for individuals to bear it, it's it's a lot to hold. But for the church to bear it, what a thing. What a thing. Jesus says, greetings, what's up? He says, don't be afraid, and then he says, go tell. Go tell. You have seen Now go tell, and when you tell, they will see. That's our commission, Church of Jesus Christ, to go tell. And go tell doesn't mean going, you know, knocking on doors and telling people, um, you know, that they need to believe in Jesus or there will be hell to pay literally. It means speaking into the fear that people have in our culture. It means speaking into the despair, the hopelessness, the frustration, the discouragement with words of hope, with words of comfort, with words of healing. You might or might not even mention your faith in Jesus as the driver of this, but I promise you, if you're speaking life into our death-dealing culture, People will wonder what your problem is. And you can tell them, my Redeemer lives. And that's all I have to say about that this morning. Our Redeemer lives. 
Jesus gave his all for us. And so we are privileged out of gratitude to give back a portion of the blessings that we have received in this life. So let's continue our worship of our Lord by bringing our tithes and offerings. Loving and beloved God, we bring now to you offerings out of gratitude and love, and we pray that you will bless these offerings, that they will go toward your purposes in the kingdom of heaven here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen.
Ellis. You may be seated. Scripture tells us that in the fullness of time, Christ's people will come from all four corners of the globe and will sit together at one table with Jesus at the head and with all of them taking their name from him. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God set for us by our Savior himself. Everyone who hungers and thirsts for the righteousness of God is welcome to partake of this meal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let's pray. Glorious God, it is truly right and our great privilege to give you thanks and praise on this day when all creation sings that Christ is risen from the dead. He has come forth from the tomb to break the tangles of despair and death. Love is come again. We praise you, O God, joining our voices with Christians around the world and with the eternal chorus of saints who rejoice forever singing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power, giver of life, heaven and earth declare your splendor. Praise, glory, and love are yours. All embracing God, we give thanks for Jesus, for his birth, life, death, and resurrection. We give you thanks for bringing him victorious from the grave, putting sin and death in subjection to him so that we need never fear those forces, no matter how strong or prevalent they seem to be. During his life, Jesus broke bread with sinners and saints alike. He fed people who were hungry. He allowed himself to be fed through other people's hospitality. Jesus healed people, people who were marginalized because of illnesses or life choices. It didn't matter to him. He wanted to see people whole. And then Jesus poured out his very life in death. And this is so we to this day and in this place, might live in love, in honor and gratitude to him. Gracious God, recalling his life, death, and glorious resurrection, we give thanks for these gifts of bread and juice and our lives in thanks and praise. Holy Spirit of God, we pray that these gifts may truly be for us the blood and body of our Savior, Jesus Christ, nourishing our spirits as wheat of the field and fruit of the vine nourish our bodies. We pray, O oh God, that you breathe out your spirit upon all who are here, upon the whole earth, so that we will have the breath to proclaim good news to all the world. And so that as your church, as one, we can rise together a testimony to your, your new creation and your desire for all humankind. Friends, it's typical on a communion Sunday to say the Nicene Creed, which is one of our oldest Christian creeds. But today we are going to speak the words of the Christ hymn, which the Apostle Paul included in his letters to the Philippians. This really is one of our very, very first creedal statements. And so in body or spirit, will you please rise and we'll say together what it is we believe through these truly, truly ancient and original words. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. 
and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> on his last night on earth, before his resurrection, Jesus sat at table with his disciples. During that meal, Jesus took the bread from the table, he blessed it, and he shared it with his disciples, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Take it and eat of it, and do this in remembrance of me. And after the meal, he took the cup. He thanked God, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim, and my friends, these are words for the ages, you proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. So we will be passing the trays around. The bread will go around first. Please hang on to the bread until everybody is served. The serving elders will come back up here. We'll get them served, and then we'll all take the bread together. When the juice comes around to you, feel free to drink it when you are ready. Will the serving elders please come forward?
friends, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And the cup of salvation poured out for you.
Gracious God, we pray that this sacred meal will give us a foretaste of what it will be to be one people, truly united in one way alone through Christ our Savior. And so we pray that this will strengthen us to be evermore your people, mindfully, in body, in spirit, and in the way we love one another. We pray that you bless this next year as we go forward, reminded that we truly are resurrection people. And now, boldly, we pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The darkness of sin, the darkness of destruction, the darkness of death itself is as nothing compared to the cool, quiet darkness of that empty tomb. Alone among the Gospels, Matthew's Gospel doesn't tell us why the women went to the tomb. The other three say that they had a project, they had a task, they were going to go anoint the body with spices, they'd been preparing the spices. They had a project. Matthew says they just went to see the tomb. So today, this week, this Easter season, my charge to you is that you practice seeing. Practice seeing that tomb. Practice seeing the ways that the love of God insinuates itself and repairs what is broken in this world. And remember to keep all things in perspective. He is risen. risen And now may God bless you and keep you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ shine upon you and the communion of the Holy Spirit give you peace. Alleluia.